how, how, how do you reckon your, your, your trading's evolved over the last year or so? Or, as a trader, how have, you, have you evolved? Have you noticed a pattern in how you've evolved? What, over the last year? Or even a year and a half, a year, a year two years even. It's very similar. Hmm? It's very similar to all the stuff you'd have seen in the past. Right. Yeah. Because it worked then. And all, all that's happened is there's stuff being added, like, you know, EMAs. Because yeah. if, you, if you think of support resistance, it, it works in three planes that you should be that should be you should be take, take a note of: horizontal, diagonal, and dynamic. Dynamic being moving averages, right? Okay. Because if moving averages, if you see them as um, <clears throat> a lot of people just use them for a trend indicator, but it's not. What it is is dynamic support resistance, and what you can do is you can profile pairs that you like. To, to gauge where the tracements are going to finish against the moving average. So you've got a confirmation signal saying, oh, moving average finished there. That's a signal for me to sell it. And I'll show you, I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Yeah, it is. So my trade hasn't really evolved. It's just... Sorry, I'll let our people ask. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just... <clears throat> it's become more refined, let's say. Good, good. And... You know, the winds are bigger because I'm not trading as much. If you if you get if you understand that, I'm not I'm not hunting for trades as much as I was before. In fact, I spend almost no time on the charts. Wow. Sunday night, Monday, go through the charts. Best setups here, 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 here. That's all I'm interested in for the rest of the week. So forex isn't about sitting in front of your computer, looking at charts all, all week. Because if you if you're doing that. You're going to get emotional. You're going to get into trades that you shouldn't be getting in because you want to trade. Of course you want to trade. What I'd rather do is get on with the rest of my life for the week, have a look at some charts on Sunday, Monday, say, I'm going to look at them this week, put some alerts on it or something. And if it hits that area, you know, I'll look to get in. But until that, I don't need to look at it. So you're maximizing your life and your profit potential. Yeah. <clears throat> Anything else? Yeah, part of a bit of a, a newbie question actually, but when you, when you talk about um, take profit one and take profit two, when you take that trade out, you take out two trades, is that right? Yeah, well, well that's not a newbie question at all. It's actually a really good question. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll look at that. <clears throat> so, okay. Right, this is how pre we pretty much approach trading, okay? Um, and looking at risk management with that as well. Um, if I've got this this price chart, right, is, is a mess, okay? To, to most people that are just new to Forest, it's a mess, okay? So what we do is we separate it out <coughs> into stuff that's easily to easy to digest. Boxes like that. Okay, and triangles within. Yeah, very, very simple. Okay, this is our price move. Okay, because at the top of this, you've got um, you've got uh, resistance or supply. At the bottom of it, you've got demand or support. Uh, and within, if you can identify these ranges, they they come around price reversal areas. Okay, and let's say in the middle of that range, there's um, a significant area of resistance or support okay so price is going to move either between the top or between the bottom and what we want to do ideally is catch trades at the top okay where the, where the box is orange because that is proven in in the past to be successful ascending price in the opposite direction okay strong resistance or strong supply uh, on the other side of it okay we want to catch trades at the bottom because consistently price buys here. Now, <clears throat> if you've got an established area of support in the middle, you've also got um, a take profit point. So whatever your risk is when you get in at the top, okay, you, if you enter there and you bring your stop loss down, you want to split that into two trades, okay? because at least if it only hits the bottom of this support, you're compounding your account, right? That the other one we want to hit the overall area of demand. So 
it doesn't mean you're going to double the lot size you put on. Okay, all you're doing is if you say, right, I've got, I've got 35 pips stop there, all you're doing is you're calculating 2%, okay, or however much you want to risk. Okay, if you calculate 2% and that says, right, you need to put 0.5 lots on, yeah, and, and that will be, that's 2% risk, okay, with that stop loss. If you, if you extend that stop loss, that, that lot size will come down because you're, you're only having 2% 2 uh, 2 risk. All you're doing is halving it, halving it and putting two trades on. So you got 0.15 lots to TP1, yeah, which is generally, okay, it's generally uh, at the nearest area of support resistance. If you can get a good risk to reward ratio, okay, which is two plus, this is 2.15, then that's excellent. Okay, so you just set that, that first trade, compound your account nearest area of support or demand there. The second trade, you just leave in because the chances are, if you caught this right, it's going to push through that mid-range price reversal area and hit the area of demand at the bottom. Because even though there's two smaller ranges in here, okay, the overall range between demand and supply is that. Yeah, so that's what you want to catch. So what you're doing is you're putting one trade on down to there. Okay, it should hit it because that's how price moves. It moves in triangles. But you're also looking to catch the extended move down to the bottom with your second trade. And you're not risking any more. All you're doing is halving your lot size and putting two trades on. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay, so, so when, when you've hit trade point one, you'd move your original stop loss down to break even. Is that right? You can do that, yeah. Um, I would suggest there's, there's many ways to do it. Everyone's different. Okay, when you get an impulsive candle, I'd move your stop loss to break even because then you're taking all the risk out. Okay, so what I mean by that is Okay. On both. Uh, when, when you get an impulsive candle, you move you on both trades. You move it down to stop uh, yeah. break you. Yeah. Okay. So if, for instance, if you got in on that candle, there's there's been an impulsive move down there. Yeah. At that point, I'm like, well, you know, if if it goes back up, the trade's invalidated pretty much. So, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to protect my account and move my stop loss from there down to, you know, below the entry point, break even because. It's an impulsive move down. It shouldn't go back up. Yeah. So, so that's the way I do it. There are a lot of ways to do it. If you do that, you might break even on a lot of trades, but I'd rather protect the account rather than, um, you know, risk it coming back and hitting my stop loss. Yeah, Because, you know, the way I see it, if I see something that validates my trade uh, in the way that that impulsive candle down does, why not? take the risk out. For all we know, Donald Trump might send a tweet out, which is going to send this all the way up there. You know, we, I, don't, I don't want that. You know, that happens more times than you think. Okay, it's Forex. We don't ever know 100% what's going to go on. So, oh, I've lost this box. So yeah, just whenever you're comfortable, you know, to move it to break even, move it to break even. Okay, I do it after a candle like that. Yeah, on any time frame, whatever time frame I'm trading. Okay, some people will leave it. Some people will wait till they take profit once hit. It doesn't really matter. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Because I'm not here to say trade like this, trade like that. I'm here to say just use a bit of common sense. Protect your account when you can. Compound your account where you can. And that's why we've got this one to take profit one. Um, and yeah, <laughs> you know, it's easier than it seems. Right? Because this this diagram I've got over here is fully transferable onto onto the charts. So, you know, you, you take a box, you give yourself a range, you take your you take your green box, you give yourself a range, okay, and you trade between the two. You know. Uh, on trend, usually that's what we like to do. Okay, but this is this is a range you can trade that. Okay, it's an established area of buying at the bottom. Every time it comes to the bottom, it buys pretty much. Yeah, so that's a confidence factor, and this is valid on every time frame. When it doesn't buy there, it doesn't give you an indication to buy, so you don't buy it. What you do is this this aside. That's a massive projection. 
Okay, what you do is you take your orange box and you move it down to there because it's clearly, if that area of demand is broken, it's in a new range, you wait for price to come up and then you sell it instead from there. You're in a new box, okay? And this box is, for instance, looking back at how price has moved previously, well, you will be able to establish boxes, which gives you areas of support uh, and resistance in which to trade between. So, you know, there's a box. Lovely. Yeah, and you know it's going to hit that support. Okay, when, when price fails through here, you know it's going to hit it because, well, it hit it there. It was resistance there. It's support there. Yeah, it's, it's a clear trading range. So as soon as it hits it, it doesn't mean you're going to buy it back up. What it means is you're setting up for the sell. Okay, because this area of demand is broken. Price has pushed through. It's coming back up. Okay, that's your selling position. If you get a confirmation there, sell it. Yeah, and then what, you're say, what we're saying there is, TP1, TP2, well, the TP1 is just going to be at the bottom of that box because it's an established area of support in the past, as you can see. That TP2 is your next box, which is this block. Yeah? And if you see your analysis, then sorry, um, your, your, your initial analysis is that it will it will get down to TP one. You know you, that that's what you're pretty much 100% confident on. But yeah. then uh, the TP two is essentially just in case it goes further than that, and well, you know, you can make more money out of it. The thing is, it, it's proven okay that it wants to go down. The trend has changed, and the reason we know that is because this green bit is no longer valid. So when that's no longer valid, it's like, right, okay, this, is, this range has been knocked out. If that's been knocked out, the downwards momentum is very strong. So what we're waiting for is we know there's a good possibility that this is going to continue going down. Purely because that's been knocked out, it's very unlikely to uh, come through, flag up like that, and then stay here. Yeah, so what we want to do is just in case, let's take profit out of the bottom. But there's a very good chance it's going to continue. So what we can do is we can say, you know, let's look at this end of this box. Okay, what happens there? If it rejects there, we'll take profit. If it doesn't, we'll look at the next box, then we'll look at the next box, then we'll look at the next box. Yeah, because if you see what happened at the bottom of this box, okay, it came up, tested the top of this box. Yeah, so all of a sudden, you know, if, if this becomes the green zone, this must become the orange zone. Okay, so when it comes up and tests in that area, give yourself another opportunity to sell it so by this point if you see that you've collected that you've collected that if you've taken profit you've let price come back up you do it all over again because it's on trend now it's valid you, do, you take that and you take if that's the end of another box you take that as well and you don't that's not there's no drawdown there because you're taking the impulsive moves you're taking the strong moves down. Yeah, you're not taking that retracement. You're not holding trades, you know, when that what goes up. What you're doing is, is you're waiting for it to get there so you can trade it down again. And the reason the reason is the trend the trend has changed. It's it's been invalidated. Yeah. And if price is in an area where you want to uh, sell it and you don't get the confirmation, such as here, you don't sell it, you just let it play out. You just ignore it. You come away from the charts. Okay, you go down into the smaller time frames. There'll be, uh, you know, reasons not to sell that on the daily. Obviously, you're not going to sell that candle, okay, because it's a big bullish in, uh, engulfing candle. So there's no need to sell that. Uh, so yeah, that that's you know trend trading. If if an established area of demand or supply gets knocked out, switch it. That area of demand becomes supply. There's a reason price doesn't want to go through there. Therefore, there's a reason it's not going to go back through once it gets beaten. And, and that, that's the whole, you know, that's what we wait for. You know, that is a, a great trade setup um, on the daily because you've established areas of strong price reversal here, okay, this box, this box, and you're just trading them because you go back, look how price moves. 
It's just back to those triangles. That's all it is. It goes up and down, up and down between the box. Okay, this one, bigger box, fine. You know, it still goes up and down between it, pretty much. And even this look, price beats this box properly, comes down, retests the top of it, goes up, rejects at the top. Right? Hard to sell the top. In fact, no. Right? Look on the look on the longer time time frame. Price reversal areas. That's what I talk about all the time. Yeah. So if you see a price reversal area, all of a sudden you've got a big massive box. That becomes orange, that becomes green. Okay, if, if it fails here, you know there's a likelihood it's gonna come down and you catch the whole move. You know, that's the choice you have. I mean, you know, it's a hard sell for me because you know it's actually uh, oh no, that's nice. Take it even further back. So what we what we look for is you know strong rejections in areas, wicks to an area. All right, it passes through a couple of times, but that's a really strong area for that to reverse. So that's quite nice. So you, you can split your whole chart into boxes and triangles, okay? And it takes away all this noise, you know, very very easily, okay? And what we're saying is, all that is is one big one of them. Okay, one big, one of them. And if you put lines through it, you have the opportunity to catch all of these little triangles as they move through the box. Okay, and the way you do that is you catch EMAs or trend lines. And it's your, it's your other areas of supply and demand. Okay, so when price comes up and it comes down and tests, on support and trend line, okay, that's a hot spot. That's an area you want to buy it in. Buy, 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 buy if you want. Okay, the, the trend is established, you've got a trend line in there. Yeah, you wanna trade on trend. Okay, so if you buy each time the box is broken, you know, and then retests, you're gonna do very, very well. If that makes sense, okay. And and on the other side of that, when price gets to the top, okay, this trend line might break. Okay, what you're waiting for is it's going to do that, retrace, 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 retrace. Okay, the trend's been broken, so you're looking at sell, 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 sell. Yeah, all right. Shit diagram, but, but you saw and get the picture, yeah? That's on trend trading, that's common sense trading. Okay, if you wait for these, if you indicate to yourself the areas of strongest reversal, even if you go, uh, let's, let's try a really spiky chart, uh, like Euro Ord, okay? If you indicate the strongest areas of reversal uh, and then map it out with lines, you know, and you only trade these areas, you'll be very successful, or you should be very successful. Yeah, okay, so let's take them areas. We put lines through them. A bit dodgy, that one. This is one of the worst charts for this, uh, so that's why I'm using it, but Okay, you, you split it into ranges like that. Right, you only use using lines. This is on the daily chart, so on the hour or the four hour, these lines will be far apart. Um, you're only using areas where prices reverse strongly in the past. Yeah, so so you know this rejection here becomes this buy. Yeah, up. Yeah, or you know this rejection here becomes this sell here. Or this buy here becomes this buy here. 
Yeah, or this cell becomes this cell. Or this retest becomes a buy of you know this resistance. It, if you just imagine these as all boxes and little triangles, you know it 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 will simplify it right out. That's all it is. Yeah. All right. Price spikes up and down through it, but generally, okay, generally it's it's a very nice way to trade. Yeah. There's one in there as well. Okay, and that's that's common sense. Now, if if you can I, then identify the trend based on what trend lines and EMAs and everything like that, then you know you're onto a winner. You are onto a winner. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of chats. Hang on. Pardon, do you uh, can I ask a question, mate? Yeah. I take it like, are you using your, your tenant use the, the daily chart rather than like the four hour chart nowadays? Well, the thing is, this you do, you trade like this, it works on every time frame, you, you, right. it doesn't matter, right? The, the thing is, if, if you're trading the minute charts, make sure you go to like the 15 or the 30 or the hour to find the strongest areas to trade in. Yeah, if I, I'm a four hour trader generally, one, of, one hour, four hour, as I always have been. You know, I'm, I'm using the daily a lot to look for these strong reversals because that's going to indicate where I want to trade in the future. That's where that's where the bankers are going to trade. You know, there's no point trading anywhere else, right? And the reason people fail in my eyes, well, there's a lot of reasons people fail, but I don't want to talk about most of them uh, on here. Uh, <clears throat> okay, the reason I think people fail is because they don't understand um, supply and demand. So if you've got a box, okay, just let's say for instance, you know, you're using um, a big box here, okay, what what I'm interested in, uh, in fact, let's say, let's say it's that little box, yeah, there's there's a clear, you know, you, you're going to get that, right, you're going to get that, now, the reason people don't lose money is because they trade in the middle of that, yeah, so they, they, if they, they trade there, based on analysis on a 15 minute time frame, for instance. Okay, they say, oh, there's a beautiful little head and shoulders there. I'm gonna get in without any looking at the bigger picture. You wanna buy at the bottom, you wanna sell at the top. You don't wanna trade in the middle. You don't wanna do anything else. That's what you wanna do. Okay, you wanna indicate these areas. And then, if you get a lovely little head and shoulders reversal here, yeah, sell the shit out of it. You get one in the middle, you're gonna lose money. Yeah. Right, so, if, even if, if I go down onto the one minute time frame, it, you know, it was, it'll be just as relevant. Okay, well, what mess. Right, there's a double top there. Um, if I go out, can I give myself confirmation for that double top? Let's go out to the 15 minutes. I can't even see the double top. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if I take this area on the 15 minute chart, there's a double bottom there. Um, Okay, let's use that as an example. All right. Okay, so if I saw a double bottom forming here um, on the lower, lower time frames, and I scrolled back on the hourly and said, oh, that's very nice, and that's very nice because break retest, uh, you know, support, spike support, 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 okay, yes, Pushed through, rejected, pushed through, rejected, fine. Okay, but if that what that means is if price comes back to this line okay, here and I see some kind of um, entry on, on whatever time frame, gives me the confidence in which to trade it. So even though on the daily, that might not be you know the best trade to take for me. If you're trading the 15 minutes, the out uh, the five minute charts or whatever, you know, this little double bottom has been validated by you finding a strong price reversal zone on the one hour chart. Yeah. <clears throat> now, it, as long as you've got that validation um, using price reversal, the strongest areas of resistance, okay, that wick is a very strong indication that price is going to turn when it comes back. Now, these bottoms are very, uh, is that the one I'm looking at? I can't remember. 
yeah, all right. Okay, so depending on your time frame, okay, it depends on where your strongest areas of price reversal are. Now, if you had uh, a four hour, no, let's say, let's take this daily daily area, okay, again. I don't know why I'm using this chart, it's one of the worst charts to use. <laughs> but if you took this daily area, okay, and you knew it was there, and you're trading a 15 minute chart, right, and you got an entry off a fit five minute, 15 minute chart at that retest point, yeah, you're gonna sell it. You're gonna sell the shit out of it. If you're on a 15 minute chart and you sell that, your stop loss is gonna be minimal. So in or 2% becomes, you know, if let's say on 15 minute chart, you've got um, a 20 pip stop loss and it move, you catch it all the way down, to, you've got a 68% trade, you know? So that's, that's the power of price reversal areas, yeah? If you can see it's happened in the past, get in on the trade. When it's been broken, okay. I wonder, just out of curiosity, let's see if there is a price reversal pattern there or something to help us get into that trade. <coughs> okay, ah, it's this one. Okay, so there isn't really, all right? It doesn't happen every time. In fact, this looks, you know, uh, you, you can break this area down on the 15 minute chart, okay? There's a box, there's a box. You know, you can trade that 15 minutes up, down, up, down if you want. Yeah. So the only reason you'd get in here, here, or here, okay, if you were a 15 minute trader, is the fact that if you go on the daily, actually, you know, fuck me, look at price there. Yeah. There's a very, very strong chance it's going to go down. Yeah. And if not, you know, do you know what? I've picked off, uh, oh God, bloody chance. If it doesn't go down, and this is what I'm talking about with regards to TP1, TP2, okay? Even on the 15 minute time frame, if you enter here, okay, there's an established area of resistance for you to trade. Yeah, so if you trade it here, let's say you've got a stop loss, uh, okay, enter on the engulfing candle there, okay, stop loss above the highest wick, right? TP1 is there, yeah? Because that's the bottom of the box, right? That's a 2.49 risk to reward ratio. It's highly likely to happen because that's the support base. And within the box, you have the triangles, pretty much. <clears throat> so it's very likely to get there. Now, if you, if you take all your profit out at that point, you have the potential of missing everything else the 68 percent trade so yeah sure okay you know five percent trade if you trade that down to there that's a five percent trade how crazy is that you know and that's what a couple of hours six hours yeah five percent a few days longer 68 percent so it's like James is on. James is a 15-minute trader. He he's he wants to see the potential in this. You know, that's there's no reason not to sell that. If you're a 15-minute trader and price keeps rejecting at the top, there's no reason not to sell that, right? And give yourself that chance of either five percent with a two percent loss or much much greater because you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's very unlikely price is going to go back through here because it's been knocked out as demand. There's no more demand here. All it's doing is collecting orders ready to drop again. This is generally how it works. And you know, I'm, I'm not oversimplifying it, that's just, that's a fact. That's what happens. You break retest, you break retest. <clears throat> um, any questions? Any? James. When you try to calculate potential return on the trade, say 6% trade, is that calculated on a TP1? <clears throat> well, TP1 should be 4% because um, if you're risking 2% and, and you want price to go double that to get to a take profit point, right? Take profit one, you, that's gonna be 4%, two times two is four. <clears throat> yeah? So when you're trading, okay, 
if, if you're just trading down to that zone, okay, the tools, TradeView is an awesome tool, guys. Use it. Um, if you're only, oh, God, where was it? Okay, what you want to do, you say, yeah, beautiful. Price is rejected twice here previously. It's a daily line of support. Right, how am I going to play this? How am I going to play this? Engulfing candle there. What does, you put your stop loss above the wick, obviously. Okay, the highest point of resistance in this uh, box. Okay, this tells you to put 38.7 pip stop loss in, right? So you've, you've worked out your risk, okay? You go on MyFXBook Pro, you get a profiled lot size to put in. You split it in half, you put two trade orders in with the same stop loss, okay? This little 2.39, that's your risk to reward ratio. So if you know this is 2%, you can times that by 2.39 and you know how much profit you're going to get out of that trade if it only goes to the bottom. So, you know, in that case, that's what, uh, it's not, it's not, it's not the hardest maths in the world, but it's let's say 4.7%. And that's how you gauge it. Yeah. You can do it another way as well. You can click this, you can go to visit uh, account size at the bottom, put your account size in. Okay. Risk 2%. All right. And it'll tell you that, if price gets to the bottom, you've got 10,477. Okay, if if you stop loss gets hit, you've got 9,800. It's a great tool, really good tool. Okay, and you know, where's the most likely points in which to get in here? Um, drag this box, box across, okay, that you have the potential to have multiple orders in this trade. There's an entry point, you've already got in there, okay. Look at the top of this box. Yeah, why not? You've just caught the next down move on Pound New Zealand, which is one of the most, uh, the second most volatile, no, in fact, it's the most volatile pair on Forex, okay? You catch it there, you catch it there, this moves quick. You make money quick, yeah? So if you catch it there, let's say, okay, take profit one, there, great. Take profit two, where's your bottom range? There. Yeah, this gives you another opportunity to get in the trade because it's at the top of the box again. Supply zone, supply zone, trade, trade. Yeah, even this, you know, smaller zone. Support base becomes resistance, trade. And all of a sudden, you can see the profit potential <laughs> Stacking up, yeah. If you can do this properly, there's another little box there. Look, trade is at the top. Okay, retest, break, retest, break, retest, break, retest. Happens on every pair, happens all the time. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, and eventually it bottoms out. Okay, but what that's what that means is. You know, you've got a trade on there. That's 5% just down to this point here. That's 5% down to uh, here. Yeah. You put another trade on at the break retest point, at the break retest point, at the break retest point. All of a sudden, you've got four trades on. You're moving your stop loss once you get that impulsive move. So there's no risk in this. You've got four trades on. This, If this top one gets you 5% to there, let's, let's make that red. Uh, Okay, this is your stop loss. Yeah, it was up here. Price has moved down. You've moved your stop loss down. Okay, you've you've made four percent within that stop loss. Yeah, because price is it's almost at the bottom of the range, right? It's five percent range. There's four percent. You move your stop loss above here. Get into a trade here. If it hits your stop loss, and you risk another two percent, you've still made two percent overall. But you have the opportunity to catch that. Yeah, and for instance, okay, that is you know, that's another 14% trade. Yeah, so this is locked in anyway. You know, you got four four percent locked here because you moved a stop loss down. This is how you make money in Forex. Okay, it's it's not how 
everyone else that promotes on Facebook tells you to do it. Okay, it's, it's not that bollocks, right? This is how you make money on Forex. You've gained 4%. Price has come back up. It's in an area where it's very, very likely to continue selling. You know that because you're looking left, you're seeing this beautiful area of resistance. Very, very high likely trade set up here. That is 14% trade. You've already got four. All you're risking is your profit. So actually, you know, if you're still in this, uh, the second part of this trade, you're going to catch that as well. That's been caught all the way from the top. Okay, you've got another trade on here. That's been caught, at least a TP1 there, TP2 there. 14%, this becomes, I don't know, let's say 10%. All of a sudden, you've got 24% in the trade. And all you're risking, the, only, the hardest bit is this entry, is telling yourself and your mindset, I need to enter there because of this, 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 this. Okay, and the main reason is you've looked on the higher time frame. That is an area of reversal, very, very strong reversal. So the chances, the gods, you know, it's in your favor here. It's, it's very much in your favor. That's very much in your favor. That's very much in your favor. That is as well. Yeah, price bottoms out eventually. In fact, that is as well. Bottoms out eventually, but by the, by the time it's there, you've made so much money, you don't care. You know? You know, for instance, you know, that's a 40% trade if you hold it from there. That's a... Obviously, I'm just doing loose stop losses here, just putting them above the piece. You know, that's another... 20, 40% there. Yeah, that's probably be another 20. The hardest thing to do, guys, okay, is give yourself the confidence to take the trades. That's how money's made. Okay? And that's why we don't trade very much. That's why we wait for the greatest setups, not the good setups. Okay? Once this has started based on that line only, pretty much, You know it's going to go down. Yeah, very, very highly, high likelihood it's going to go down. Okay, and if you play that right, it's very easy to say it in hindsight, of course. Okay, I know that. I understand. And that's why I, I tend not to trade in hindsight. I usually put this stuff up before it happens on through the setups channel. Okay. You know this is going to happen. You know this is very likely to happen. When when prices are in a trend. It will do that, okay? This is just your triangles moving down the trend line, essentially. Okay, this is starting to look messy now, so sorry. <laughs> this is what I do. I draw loads of shit, and eventually it looks, no one can understand what I'm doing anymore. But uh, shout at me if you don't, all right? Because I, I love this stuff. I talk about this stuff all day. Um, yeah? They, all they are is it's your triangles moving through ranges, because that's just what they do. Trade, 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 trade. You know, and I, I, I don't mean to oversimplify it, guys, but this is what this is what we we call staircasing, and it's I think it's in unit six of my group. Staircasing, walking down the stairs. All right. I don't mean to sound babyish, but that's what it is. It's, it's walking down the stairs. It's a trend walking down the stairs because there's a daily area of rejection very, very, very likely to happen. Right? And if you catch each of these retracements, you know, you're not going to be working for much longer. So you, you need one of these trades a year, really. Yeah? But in hindsight, okay, yes, I can show you this and everyone can be like, oh, wow. You know, getting in the trade is the hardest bit. And as soon as you break this even at the top, you have the opportunity to catch something like this. No, I didn't pick this pair on purpose. This, in fact, this isn't even that big a move, you know, uh, in the grand scheme of things. That's just that, yeah? Now, remember that trade I was talking about earlier? Okay. Imagine doing the same all the way and we actually 
there was an entry at the top of that in the South Channel. I don't think we took it uh, in the end, but look at it. You know, that's about 3,000 pips in a month or two. Okay, the, so people don't lie about Forex. Uh, when they say, you know, you see all, all the Facebook marketers saying, you become rich and be on your wildest dreams and be a millionaire and everything. They're right. But they're doing it the wrong way. They're doing it for the wrong reasons. They're showing you money. You should never show money in this game. Because as, as soon as you see money, your mindset's fucked. Never make it about money, okay? Make it about percentages. Because if I've got a £10,000 account and you've got a £100 account and we take the same trade and we both make 10%, the trade's just as good, all right? Just because I may have made more money, you don't know that, okay? It's the same trade because we both made a percentage growth on our account and we've compounded that account. Okay? As soon as you start seeing figures like £2,500 profit, you want the same. You're going to go and hunt those trades out. Your mindset's off. Yeah, it's off. Um, and, you know, it's, that's, a, yeah, minimum two to one, James. But that's a difficult um, thing to accomplish is to take that element of hype out. Uh, and that's, you know, that's what we do. We take the element of hype out um, because a lot of us have previously been in a fairly toxic environment where there's a lot of hype and there's a lot of profit and that doesn't help anyone as far as I'm aware. Yeah, I know you're, he's smiling, James. <clears throat> so that's how we do it. We take away the hype, we take away the LMM, we take away everything else. And it's just common sense trading principles. Yeah. What more can I say? It's common sense trading principles. If, if you're not trading on trend, then you're waiting for the break and you're waiting for the test and you're getting in on the, on the other trend because that is the new trend. And then you're just collecting. You stack, 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 stack all the way. <clears throat> and it's not oversimplifying at all. all right? It's not. Um, because we've got people that are doing this uh, and you know, being successful with the training. Okay. Because what we look for, what happens on the left side of the trend will generally happen on the right side of a trend okay and what you're looking for is multiple areas of confirmation so if it's on top of a line whether it be a trend line a horizontal line an ema okay it's likely to buy it's likely to move like that okay and then it's likely to come back and give you the same opportunity at the next area of support two areas of support buy it again of course at the same time if you're taking these trades, you know, you're saying, right, okay, I've got a TP1 there. I've got a TP2 around this point. I can take it out there if I wish, or I can leave it to track, catch the whole thing. Now, your stop loss in the meantime, if you're in this second range, is here, which is locked in. When price gets back down here, you say, okay, I'll take it again. There's a TP1, there's a TP2. Buying the triangles, buying the trend, buying the trend, okay, up to a certain point. And the time to get out is whenever your overall range has been met. Okay, so if there's an area of supply there, obvi obviously, you're not going to trade it through there. You're going to take your profit. Whatever you've got at the end, you're going to take. And there's a good chance if you get on each of these, you know, there's a good chance you're going to be getting the rounds in yeah because you know this is a tp1 okay let's say like i do what i do is i have i've got all my boxes okay if my second trade entry it doesn't have a tp point set because what i want to know is if it comes up to this line is it going to reject is it going to push through because i want to catch the whole of that if i if i can right if it rejects here fine i'll take my profit if it pushes through and then consolidates, I'm holding it. Because I know that area has been beaten. So if that keeps happening as it should on a trend, okay, this second trade entry goes to the top. My overall take profit area, this second entry goes to the top. This second entry goes to the top. This second entry goes to the top. So my TP1s 
compounded, compound, 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 compound. Of course, what that means is each of these second, each of these entries is a larger lot size the further you go up because you've compounded your count, you've gained. So, you know, there's no maths with this. Um, this is a visual representation. You can probably imagine how powerful that is if you catch it and you get all these trade entries on. And essentially, this stop loss, if you can get that safe or get it at at least 2%, you've got the opportunity of getting on the trade here and being risk-free. So actually, the hardest bit is this box. If you can navigate this box successfully, win a winner chicken dinner. But, you know, that's, that's the potential. That is what we look for. Okay, and when, the, when it hits this area, it's going to sell because that's what it does. Okay, we've established that it goes between a one big box. And you're looking at all these little boxes in between. So when this breaks down, you do exactly the same on the other side. Because the support and resistance lines are just as valid on the way down as they are on the way up. And we call that peak symmetry. And I'm not, I'm not going to go through the motion again, but there's your retest levels. When price breaks, the line comes back to the box. Retest level, sell, 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 sell. It is as easy as it looks, okay? You just have to get in the trades. And that's what I say to the guys. If you can see this, you should be taking trades. If you can see this is gonna happen, and with the trading, you should see this is gonna happen. You need to be in those trades. And if you, if you lose the trades, you know, that's fine. There's always another trade. You only need to catch one of these, you know? Uh, but our, we have realistic targets, so, um, what I say to the guys time and time again is, you know, you see everyone on Facebook saying, oh yeah, 90% win rate, blah, 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 blah. I'm the best, I'm the best. This is a realistic target, all right? And if you can achieve this, okay, then you've made it. I'm just writing it down. Okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Okay, let's keep it realistic. I'm, I'm famous for being realistic, a realist. Compare that to what everyone else on, on Facebook says. Two to one risk to reward ratio, 50% win rate. That's realistic, okay? Especially if you're taking highly probable trade setups, which happen to be retests. If you can do that, you're done. All you have to do that is you do that consistently for a year. Your, your account is massively compounded. This isn't, you know, what does everyone, what does everyone do, right? When they see someone, someone posts, I've got 100% win rate on Facebook. Well, uh, 100% win rate doesn't exist, by the way. Okay, but everyone seems to have one. It's amazing, isn't it? 90% of traders lo lose 90% of their money in 90 days, but everyone on Facebook has a 100% win rate. It's amazing. Um, yeah, so 100% in, what do they usually say? I don't know. Three to six months, you know, you'll be financially free. Yeah. Come on, guys. Are you still falling for stuff like that? Keep it realistic, okay? We're, we're, we're realistic. We're human beings. We're going to make errors. Yeah. We, we will never have 90% win rate. We'll never have 100% win rate. Okay. It's, you know, you, you take that those skills that I've just showed you and get that with it, you're set. I promise you, if you can achieve 50% win rate with a decent risk reward, you are set. And that's what I say to the guys, because it's realistic. And having some, a realistic target, okay, when people don't know about Forex, what they see is this 90% target as realistic because they don't know any better, right? 50% is realistic, okay, for anyone using just pure support resistance, candlesticks, whatever, you know, as long as you're not using confirmations in isolation, 50% is very much realistic. 
And when you catch one of their moves that I've just shown you, you know, 20% is all you need. You know, if, if you can catch it and then go buy it, sell, 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 you know, you don't need a big win rate. You just need the big moves. <clears throat> so it's common sense trading. Okay, that's all it is. Just common sense trading on the trend, okay, buying the retests wherever they hit, using whatever tools you want. Oh, I did say I'd show you a profile DMA quickly. Um, yeah, so what I mean by that is, oh, I didn't realize it's nine o'clock already. I'm going to have to wrap up in a minute. Um, what I mean by that is, uh, let's say one, one came up in the, my chat group a couple of days ago. Okay, you see this? This is all CAD on the daily, right? If I was to add an EMA on here, um, this, these are my Blash EMAs. Hang on. Okay. This EMA here. Okay, when price comes to it, it's very likely it's going to go down. Yeah, that, that's what we're looking at here. Okay, and it, all it is is an extra confirmation, right? So this trade here is a very simple trade because of two reasons. You're looking at what happens in the past. You're looking at the break of, break of the demand. Okay, you're looking at retest of the demand. What happens, happens to be there is an EMA that is consistently catching retracements, such as the 17 in this case. Okay, and again, at a break retest level. So even, even if a, you know, a break retest isn't strong enough, you, know, you can use this to your advantage. Okay, that's what a profile EMA is. Um, and you know, there's profiles here for each pairs, but generally uh, the same ones are valid time and time and time again. Uh, you know, not in consolidation, but when it's trending and when areas are broken, what we look for is first retracement trades. Okay, so once this area has been knocked out, okay, because you can see price reverses and goes up previously, once that's been knocked out, you're looking for the orange box beneath it. And if you can get that with settings that are, you know, profiled or something that gives you more confidence to sell it, you know, then fucking sell it. You've got no reason not to. And that's just a quick example of what you look at. Okay, that's dynamic support resistance. Not the best example, but the first one that came to my head. <clears throat> yeah, so you know, you take you take your box again, okay, take your trend line, all right, and price moving along the top. Okay, the other thing we look for is the little lines in between. Yeah, but switches of EMAs, um, whatever it happens to you, you happen to be using, okay? Let's say this is the trend bottom, okay? So that there might be a trend line coming down here. Okay, price is reversed. What we're looking for is a first retracement. Price pushes up, comes down. Where's it gonna end? Well, an area of support resistance, a smaller area of support resistance is your first confirmation. Okay, there are many other confirmations. There might be Fibonacci, um, divergence, whatever. One of the big ones we use is moving averages that will curve around like this, okay, and act as a level of dynamic support. That's all it is, dynamic support or dynamic resistance, yeah? Dynamic resistance. Okay, so you've got horizontal, you've got diagonal, you've got dynamic. Get all three, you're winning. That's blast, James. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah, and that's, yeah, yeah. And, and that's what it's all focused around, you know, and it works so well. Um, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not on here to talk win rates or anything like that, but it just works well. Uh, so we'll just leave it at that. <coughs> and yeah, so that's some good stuff. Uh, so, uh, anyone else got any burning issues they want to talk about? No? All good? Cool. Um, well, I've been on for an hour, so I'll probably leave it there then if, if no one's got any more questions or anything. 
or there's something they don't understand of what I've been talking about. Have you got any books that you're reading on Forex or are you just going to bother anymore? Mate, honest, honest, mate, I don't need to yeah. really yeah. Read, read books, other, other trading strategies and stuff. Um, because I sort of got something that works and I don't want to, you know, sort of start yeah. filling my mind with stuff that might be slightly different. And I'll be like, Oh yeah, I want to trade that now. I want to try that. Um, there are some flash specific books um, that are very useful that I will read again. I can't remember the names of them. They're in the group. Um, I think, no, I can't remember the names. Mindset stuff's always good. Um, but I, I, I generally, you know, use uh, the, the guy's recommendations on YouTube to watch some of that stuff. I've got uh, the Mark Douglas seminars if you want to look at them. Yeah, I've got them. Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. <clears throat> but yeah, my, my time of reading books is, you know, I haven't read one for a while, really. Anything else? Thanks very much for your time, mate. I really appreciate it. It's, it's good to speak to uh, hear you again because uh, I think the last time I saw you was uh, was this time last year when we were doing the, the other company where we were, we were doing the boot camp thing so mm. yeah remember that yeah it's been a while since I've done anything public um, obviously I do enjoy doing this kind of stuff because I want people to see potential rewards, rewards but in the right way you know not in the way that it's usually shown um, it's, it, common sense is is the way forward that's what's setting me free you know i wanted to set everyone else free and the, the people are doing very very well um doing it which is good uh but you know take take the charts away it's all about what's going on in your head and that and that's the most important thing um i think you know military ex-military have an advantage in the fact that we were used to having our minds fucked so you know, so yeah, uh, Steve knows, you know, James. Um, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but everyone else, you know, that wants a piece of the pie, so to speak, you know, if you're not going to do it the right way, then don't, there's no point. And if people are, are hyping to you, then you're not going to do it the right way, guys. Because that's not what it's about. It's, it's about hard work and effort and education. It's, and it's not about shiny objects that are going to keep, you know, make, make sure you maintain your subscription for an extra month. It's, it's not about stuff like that. Okay. It's just about hard work. Don't talk about Mustangs. I don't want to talk about Mustangs. Well, I'm not on here to talk about them, mate. <laughs> that's, that's, that's nothing to do with trading or I'm not associating that with trading. <clears throat> yeah. I knew someone would bring that up eventually. All right, so anything else, guys? No, thanks very much. Uh, it's been fantastic, Pablo. It's been really good. So uh, always get good value. Excellent. Yeah, I appreciate that, James. Uh, yeah, there, was a, there was a point where I, it was weird not having you in on any of the calls. Uh, but maybe we'll see you again one day. Yeah, well, my, mate's, my mate David's in with you, so uh, he mm. raves the book, so he likes what you're doing, so that's good. Yeah, it's, it is a good place to be. And the people that come in generally don't leave. So, they, you know, I'll take that as a good sign. Um, <clears throat> yeah, thanks for coming on, guys. I really appreciate it because I wasn't expecting anyone to come on, to be honest, because it's Valentine's Day. So, um, yeah, I appreciate your time. And I'll, I'll talk to you all soon.